This episode of Warp 5 is brought to you by Audible.com, offering more than 180,000 titles for smartphone, tablet, and desktop. To get a free audiobook of your choice and help Trek FM at the same time, visit audibletrial.com slash trekfm. And also by Enterprise in Space, an international program of the nonprofit National Space Society. Find out how you can help science and education and become a virtual crew member aboard the NSS Enterprise Orbiter by visiting enterpriseinspace.org. And if you want to join in on the conversation and share your thoughts on this episode or any other, please join the Babel Conference, our listeners group on Facebook. Just type Babel, that's B-A-B-E-L, into the Facebook search field. We look forward to seeing you there. This is David A. Goodman, writer and consulting producer for Star Trek Enterprise, and you're listening to Warp 5 on Trek FM. Welcome, boomers, to another episode of Warp 5, Trek FM's dedicated podcast to Star Trek Enterprise. I am your host, Patrick Devlin, and I'm joined today, as always, by my good friend, Brandy Jackalow. Brandy, how are you? I am great and sweaty again. It's still just 100 degrees every freaking day here. (laughs) Yeah, we really kind of need, like, fall to pop up for you already. I am so ready for it. There are people who are complaining about, oh, well, the leaves are going to start to turn. And that's when I go, yes, bring the cold to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I don't know. I'm a summer person, but it's been hot this summer. It's been kind of brutal. Yeah, it's always brutal here. All my power outages and no AC has not helped any of this, the, <laughs> this but, but it has been hot regardless of that fact, which is probably why we're having so many stupid mm-hmm. power outages. But, um, yeah, so that all sucks. Ooh. And uh, But what doesn't suck is we're going to do this podcast right now, and uh, I think we have a really good topic. But before we get into our topic, do we have anything from Babel from the last episode? We do have a few things. Uh, the last episode that was released was, of course, our Season 4 Retrospective Part 3. And uh, we had some lovely comments. Chris Hill said, this one has inspired me to rewatch these episodes, which were always happy to hear and also uh brandon a cowell says the forge awakening and kirshara are my favorite story arc and rightly so our good friend and associate producer chris tribuzio says i listened to this episode and i agree that this arc is the best of the series i also agree that this arc had fan service done right side note i am also a huge 24 fan and would love to talk 24 anytime I'll have to get on that because I could talk 24 forever. <laughs> uh, Patrick Carlin, of course, jumps in a bit and says Joanne Cassidy. Sorry. Joanna Cassidy was also Dolores in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I remember I didn't make the connection at the time, but one time when I was watching Home, my sister came into the room during one of her scenes and recognized her from that. Also, I love that the questions that Siren tests Archer with are from Spock's memory test in Star Trek IV. That was an awesome callback. I had completely forgotten about that, and that is true. Yeah, no, that was a great one. And I didn't know that she was in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is pretty cool uh, Till I read that. You know, <laughs> that statement on Babel. Uh, I actually was, uh, I've seen it once. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? What? <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen it once and never felt compelled to watch it again. I've watched it like a hundred times. Well, to each their own. Yeah, well, I was probably a little younger when I first saw it too, so. Yeah, well, and I, w- I, I saw it in the it. theater. I did too. I, I didn't hate it. I just No, no, but what I mean by that is I was, yeah. then I had to have been younger. Yeah, of course. Yes, bring up how old I am again, Patrick. Thank you. It's, no, it's more of how Thank young you. I am. How young I am. Mm-hmm. In comparison to me. What uh-huh. was cool? Yeah. But actually, no, what was the coolest is it was the first time I was ever in a projection booth. It was for that oh, really? Movie. Yeah, So because my uncle did the electric work in that theater. So I got to go check out the projection booths and how back then it was still, you know, actual reels. 
so the movie would play in one theater and then shoot through the the wall into the next room into the theater we were at. Oh wow! Yeah, it's pretty cool. I've never been in a projection booth. I feel like I have missed out on life. Yeah, maybe a little. No, mm. well, oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Sad Brandy is sad. <laughs> I would hope Sad Brandy is sad. No, uh, well, it's better than being Sad Brandy is mad. Yes, yeah. that's, that's a way worse combination. You don't want Happy Brandy to be sad. That'd be weird. No, I can be happy and sad at the same time, and that's all right. The sad, mad thing. Not a good thing, though. Gotcha. Um, was that the last comment, or do we have any more? That is the last comment, so okay. we are good to move it on. Okay, so uh, we are going to return to giving you our best moments of certain characters. We're doing this in a little different format than other people might have thought we were doing it. Um, instead of following through Hoshi Season 1 through 4 or following through the cast through Season 1, we're going to skip to another character in another season every episode till we finally get through all of them in all seasons. Yeah, it's like playing a game of mansion, apartment, sh uh, shack, or home. <laughs> yes. I'll explain it to you later. Yeah, because I don't know that game. So, But yeah, sure, it's just like that. <laughs> I, I will explain it to you later. Um, it's, uh, it's something schoolgirls did. Anyway. Gotcha. Yeah, then I wouldn't know. Yeah, um, but it, 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 re it, re it revolves around answers to things and then eliminating them by, you know, by counting a certain number around and around and around until you only have one option left in each category. Gotcha. So, like so yes, that does make sense. So, right. Yeah. So, so this week, instead of doing Hoshi Season 2 or Mayweather Season 1, we're doing Mayweather Season 2. Because we're fun like that. Yes, and then next one we'll do... I don't know, maybe Flock Season 3. We're not sure. We haven't talked about it yet. But that sounds like a good idea, so. Yeah. I say we do that. It sounds good to me. Sweet. Put it in the books. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to do Mayweather Season 2, which uh, Mayweather's one of my favorite characters who don't who doesn't get a lot of screen time throughout gets, all of Star Trek. He gets more screen time than you think. He's just, just not necessarily doing anything except well, for... <laughs> piloting yeah there's, there's a lot of scenes where he's just looking at stuff uh -huh. he's very good at looking at stuff. yeah like even when he's not piloting like there's there's a whole we'll get into it because it's one of my moments but he's doing nothing for most of the moment yep so all right so for people who don't know i, I, I guess mayweather was the uh, helmsman of the enterprise and uh he left his family's cargo ship to go into Starfleet, which upset his family in the beginning. He thought his dad was really mad at him. He hadn't spoken to him in a long time. Until later on in the season, we find out something about that. We'll go into that when we get to that, because something about that's on my list, too, so let's not give away too much. Mm -hmm. um, but he uh, and he becomes one of the, the first Helmsman. He becomes the first, not one of, but the first Helmsman of a Warp 5 starship. For Starfleet, anyway. Yeah, and he's really, really good at his job. Yes, yes, he, he's he's the best. I mean, um, to, presumably in in the known universe. Yeah. For for humans, anyway. So. Sure. Uh, what? Well, let's start with your first instance or moment or action or facial expression or dead stare into <laughs> space, whatever it is. <laughs> Actually, this one doesn't count, but I'm going to mention it because I want to. And the reason it doesn't count is because it's not actually Travis. But in Dead Stop, the Travis simulacrum uh, has his shirt off after coming in from, like, working out or whatever. And ooh, la, la, let me just say, <laughs> the man is sculpted in, in a very, very fine, fine way. And I enjoyed that. But then you realize later after he gets, quote, unquote, killed, that it's not really Travis. Skipping that one, here's my real one. Um, I don't really care for the episode in particular, but the seventh has Travis being action Travis and he's, he's being the heavy, you know, waiting at the door of this restaurant slash landing area for, on this planet where they're trying to find this guy and he's glowering at the room and looking around being action Travis and then he's the one who finds the holographic power source on the ship that is hiding the actual biotoxins and finds the biotoxins so yay Travis action Travis saves the yeah. day so one of his just looking around moments mm -hmm. but 
Okay, so I have the seventh, but it's not my first, and it's not that exact moment. So my first was in season three, Minefield, mm-hmm. where he doesn't do anything other than pilot the ship but not kill Reed. See, the key here is he doesn't kill Reed. And whether we see all – that whole moment takes place mostly not with Travis – but it's Travis that doesn't kill Reed that's really important here because it shows just how good of a pilot he really is. Because he's able to navigate a minefield gently and not kill a guy stuck to a mine on the outside of the ship. Yes. Which I think and... I would have just killed him and been like, oops, sorry, I messed up. Let's fly out of here. Yeah, and wasn't he actually doing it manually? Because, yes. Yeah. And you couldn't, you could yeah, it was fly by wire. Oh, I mean, so, yes. So the fact that he can do that... It, that to me, that's just an amazing moment. Even if he's not necessarily on the screen for the whole moment. No, but when he is on the screen, it, it's staring at things that aren't. Actually yeah, right. Yeah, very, he's very good at it. Very, 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 very stern look. And yeah, he's very focused. Yes. Very, yes. very. Which focused. Well, you'd have to be to get to a minefield, right? I mean, yeah. Remember, this is the episode where all of a sudden they just blow up on the side. Amazingly, no one dies. But they <laughs> a chunk of the ship is gone, and now there's mines attached, and Reed yep. gets stuck through the leg, and Travis has got to get out of there without killing him. Yeah, that, that actually was on my list, but I had to narrow it down to five, and so I took that one off. So, well done. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so <laughs> now I will follow that up with my second one, which is from the seventh, and that's... um. When they go to ha- uh, apprehend um, Minos. Mm-hmm. So, again, Travis is just kind of there, right, looking around, doing the looking thing. And then Archer spots Minos and takes off after him. Paul takes off after him. And Travis just barrels through his chest like he's a, like this is a running back coming through the hole. Mm-hmm. And he, there's no way he's getting a first down. You don't even really see Travis. <laughs> he's off frame tackling a man to the ground and the guy's just like I mean he definitely had a concussion it was a great hit we didn't know Travis played football but he does he clearly does and I love the fact that out of nowhere he just levels the guy completely levels him a guy who would think even though he, in his advanced age was living in a rough and tumble kind of place he could take a bit of a hit but he couldn't take a Travis hit <laughs> no he sure did not see that one coming Nope. But see, we've seen Travis with his shirt off, so we, we so we knew. knew we should have known. I should have known. I should have. Yeah, I should have known. But I mean, that was such a great. You don't even really see the hit, but you could see the aftermath, and he wrapped him up, and he. It was a good hit. It was a really good hit. That's that's one of those where after you hit the take down the quarterback like that, you're just like yeah, and you're doing your little celebration <laughs> on the field, and then you get flagged for you know. Excessive celebrating. Well, well, back in the day, you used to be able to jump up and do the whole cutting your throat thing. I mean, that was that kind of hit. Yeah, well, I'm glad that he didn't do the cutting the throat thing, because that would be conduct unbecoming of a Starfleet officer. (laughs) Well, to be fair, Travis didn't get up either. So (laughs) he knocked himself (laughs) out in this moment. I mean... (laughs) But hey, he took That's why football players wear helmets. Yeah. but it was, I, to me, it was a great moment. It showed, it showed a little bit different side of Travis because it's not just. It started off a typical Travis moment, just standing there looking at stuff, mm-hmm. not even having a word. They keep talking through that episode up until that point. Paul and Archer are talking constantly, and Trip just keeps having these confused looks on his face, like I'm going. We have to apprehend who? He did what? And then boom, he nails the guy. Yeah. Well, he wasn't briefed before they left because of the nature of the mission. And so. Right. And no one was, apparently. You couldn't even tell the acting captain where you were going. No. And that's fine because, you know, Vulcans and their privacy. Right. So, <laughs> off topic, but I love how <laughs> Trip can't answer anyone's questions on anything. I know. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Uh, they want the captain. No, um, uh, I'll, I'll get back to you. And <laughs> he tries to eat and. Uh, yeah, and he he gets over that by season four. So, <laughs> yeah, thankfully. Yeah, he he makes a very good commanding officer. He in, in makes a Vulcan terrible trilogy. section, terrible section thirty one member. If he can't make a decision. Yeah, well, it's it's different when you're in command, but when because you have other lives depending on you. And granted, you may have other lives depending on you when in section thirty one situation, but you're largely working on your own, undercover. So, you don't have as much to worry about besides yourself no i agree i agree i just i found that whole scene hilarious and <laughs> i wanted i want i watched 
we we planned to the a little uh, behind the scenes for the for the listener. We planned this episode for like four weeks ago, and <laughs> then uh, my communications array went down. I jumped through space and time a few times, and then we had then another idea came up, and we it just got all squonky, and so I had to rewatch these. I rewatched all these at least moments, if not the full <laughs> episodes today. So I, I seeing that I just had to throw that in there. Well, thank you for confessing. I I did not re- rewatch any of the moments, so because <laughs> I I didn't have time. <laughs> you also have forty items on your list. Uh, just no, forty three <laughs> actually. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Okay. So, so what was your number two? My number two, if I can remember correctly, uh, this one it's a weird moment, but it just makes me smile. So in singularity. Uh, being this close to this singularity, getting closer to the singularity, it makes everybody react with major obsessive compulsive disorder, getting worse and worse and worse the closer that they get. And so everybody has these things that they're really obsessed about. Hoshi is obsessed about, I think it was making me so soup correctly. And, you know, everybody's got this thing. What's Travis's thing? Doing his job. He is obsessed about doing his job to the best of his ability. Despite the fact that Phlox kept him in sick bay all night, he was just like, no, I've got to get to my station. I've got to get on shift. And it was just like, that is the most adorable thing to be obsessed about. Yeah, right. Because this is the episode where Tripp's trying to fix the chair, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so really, Travis wasn't affected. Yeah. It seems like he would be that way anyway. <laughs> like, no, dude, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta stare intently at a screen <laughs> and fly this thing. I mean, I know everything. There's like gadgets to fly everything, and I push a button, but I gotta stare at that screen. Yeah. That's that's actually really true. It was it was just Travis, but a little more panicked than yeah, usual right. about getting to his shift on time. <laughs> so, yeah. He just, um, his, his fear is letting people down on Enterprise, apparently. So that's what he obsessed about was doing yeah, his it's, job. Yeah, it's really crazy. But it, I would great. I actually like that episode a lot. I mean, it's not, it's not the most wide uh, net of an episode. It kind of just matters for that one episode and whatever. Yeah. But, um, but it's fun. It's a fun episode. You see all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And the obsession oh, yes. with the chairs and the obsession with getting out of sick bay and everything else. But, uh, yeah, Travis is just like panic Travis. And that's not much changes other than panic. Yeah, just just panic about doing his job right. Oh, Travis. Which is interesting. You're just so pure. <laughs> You're just so pure. Pure as the driven snow. But it makes sense, doesn't it? Because... I mean, he he's he spent his whole life on a ship. Mm-hmm. He was groomed from a really young child to eventually be like a captain. Now he's on a track that's got him way, way lower in that totem pole. Uh, interesting fact about the side fact about that: when they originally pitched the idea, he was going to be a lieutenant, but they were afraid to make him that because of his age difference between him and Reed. They didn't want them to be the same rank. Oh, uh, you know, I don't think that that's okay. I think that that's ageism. Hey, because... I, this time you win, I lose. Don't complain. Yeah, but but that's the thing. It's still ageism. You, it is. You don't give out rank based on somebody's age. You yeah, give but they, it based they, on ability. What I read, I, I don't know where I read this. They were, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily his young age that was the problem either. It was that they didn't want people to look at Reed as if he took too long to get there. Well, again, that's the problem of the viewer. I think that Starfleet wouldn't give two hoots or a holler at what age. <laughs> um, I don't think it matters what rank he really was anyway in, yeah. in the end of it because he's the number one helmsman of the one ship fleet. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> two ships. There's two well, ships. Not when it starts. <laughs> yeah, but the Columbia's being built. <laughs> But but he's the number one element of the one ship fleet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. But, <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so that was two, that was right? Two. Okay, Numero so now two. What's your three? My three. Uh there are so many choices. Um 
My third one is from uh, the episode The Catwalk. And it's, again, him just being really good at what he does because they have to get rid of the invaders on the ship. And so Travis is steering them towards a plasma eddy in this massive, massive storm. And he's just, yeah, it's he's sweating. But the only reason he's sweating is because it's getting freaking hot in there because of the warp engines having been on when they had shut them down. And, uh, and he's just like, yeah. Uh, guys, um, we're getting really close to this, uh, so I really think we should turn off of that. And Paul's like, hold your course. He's like, but we're getting really close to the point of no return. And then finally Archer comes through. Hey, Travis, I hope you're not steer still steering towards that plasma, Eddie. <laughs> uh, well, yes, I am, Captain. I would like, I really wish, I kind of wish he would have said, well, yes, I am, Captain, because Paul said I had to, okay? Yeah, like, talk to her. <laughs> yeah, talk to your second in command all right but uh, he's just totally calm just totally calm he's just like yep i got this i don't want to do this it's kind of scary but i'm never i'm not going to show it in my eyes it's like cows they never show it in their eyes <laughs> okay oh man so my my third one is from catwalk and it's a little bit different scene but when they're going in and it gets really rough and everyone's standing there and you can see the panic on archer's face you can see the panic on Tripp's face and on T'Pol's face, and he's like, uh, I don't think it's going to make it. And they're like, uh, try a little harder. And he's like, all right, <laughs> go forward. Like, he's cold as ice through that whole scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, like, amazing. Like, I'm, I'm flying this thing in to kill everybody. Let's do it. Yep. You know, we, won't, and, we won't feel a thing when it happens. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I, I get that's what I want in someone who has to fly in that scenario. Absolutely. Because I don't want him to pa over panic and over correct. But, like, it's a great scene because everyone, when T'Pol is nervous, everyone should be nervous. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, yeah, this is just another day, guys. Uh, it's just another day on the job. I got this. Yeah. And uh, and I love that. I just love that. It's kind of a trend I have here with him. This is the, the character trait of his that I love the most. Of course. Like, because he, it's... He, he can't be shaken. Like, he it's can't. just crazy. Yeah, it's... <laughs> And the thing is that he, it's not like he's a really serious person, personality-wise. No, you just know, at work. He, just at work. He does his job perfectly. He holds himself to a really high standard, and it shows. Because when has Travis screwed up while, you know, at the helm? Never. Right, exactly. It, it's it's crazy. It's it's insane. He's just, like you said, he, he's probably the class clown outside of work. Oh, yeah. He, he's a little bit of a goofball and adorable, and I love him for that. But in that, he, like, sits down in that chair and it's, shoo, Iceman. Like, yeah. wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually reminds me of another thing that I had on my possibilities for um, moments. But I have to choose, and so I have to eliminate it. <laughs> but... But just an honorable mention because uh, there's that scene in Stigma when Travis is in sick bay with an injury and he's telling Flocks about the game with the Fargans and just how excited he is. And he says, okay, so you've got these things that look like cows and you've got this ball that you're tossing around and keeping it away from them. And then they figure it out and you've got these baskets on your hand and <laughs> just... And he is just so adorable how enthusiastic he was about this game that, like, broke his rib or something. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's what I love about Travis is that when he has fun, he has fun really at the maximum level. Right. But that seems like everything with him. Like, everything's like, like if he became a drug addict, he'd be the biggest drug addict ever. Like, everything's an extreme <laughs> with him. Like, he can't do anything to a minimalist. He just he can't just kind of have a little bit of fun or, you know, stare off into space idly. Like, it's, it's <laughs> hyper-focus and playing games with cows. Like, those are the two things that, that, that make him Travis, and it's crazy. Playing games with cows, yeah. yeah well, lots of names. Once, once those cows realize that you're, trying, you're playing basically keep away with the ball and they figure out the pattern, yeah, ramming them will, will break your chest. Yeah. So. <laughs> I would have thought they, you would have seen the cow coming. Yeah, well, out I, of think, the way. I think they get just, you know, it's kind of like when you see a bull coming, but there's more than one. Yeah, there's true. a lot of them. <laughs> so. True. 
right. Oh, Fargans. <laughs> <laughs> so my fourth um, moment is actually changing gears a little bit. And uh, it happens in Horizon, which is episode 20 of season two, uh, two where uh, he's sitting in that odd area. and The sweet spot. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he says he hadn't been there since they first left or something like that. And uh, Archer says to him, yeah, Mayweather, uh, Mayweather, Trip told me what happened. And uh, basically what we're getting at is his, his dad passed away six weeks earlier. And the mother tried to get a message to him and it never got to him. And now he uh, he's uh, he's kicking himself for not calling his father earlier that he was within communicator range a few months earlier. But he wasn't ready to talk to him because he thought that his father was still really mad at him and he, he wasn't ready to face him for leaving and going into Starfleet. And um, so th- this one of the reasons this episode talks to me is uh, I can remember the day my dad went into a coma and I was in the uh, in the seventh grade uh, and I was I was a typical seventh grader in my neighborhood anyway. Uh, some of you were smarties, but I, I was actually very smart and very lazy in school, extremely lazy. I wouldn't do homework, and I was still getting like 95s and 100s on my test, and I basically looked at teachers and said, if I don't need to do the work to get these grades, why would I do that? That's just stupid to do the work. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, but uh, there was one class, and I can't, I cannot remember for the life of me what class it was. That I just wasn't doing that good in, and I should have been. It was a class that I enjoyed. You know, I remember. It was, um, <laughs> this is ironic. It was a psychology class, a sociology class that used Star Trek, um, which is the reason why I wanted to get into, originally I wanted to get into, um, like, blogs and stuff like that. And the reason why I wanted to get into podcasting about sociological issues in Star Trek was because of this class, because it used episodes of TNG and TOS to explain things that happen in our own world. So, and I had been doing bad, we hadn't done the Star Trek stuff yet, but I was doing bad in, st- in that class up to that point, and my dad went into a coma, but I I didn't know it. I lived in an apartment building at the time on the sixth floor, and I'd gotten on the elevator, I'd just gotten a really good grade, I got 100 on my last uh, sociology test, and I, I actually, instead of hanging out with my buddy Steven and, um, and uh, Chris, I ran home, because my dad had been in and out of the hospital because he had diabetes. He was losing toes and, and a couple other things. I, I'm getting really heavy and personal. But uh, I ran home to show him this 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 test. And as the door opened to the elevator, I could hear my mother crying in our apartment. And for whatever reason, I instinctually knew something happened to my father. I, I remember walking in and, like, you saw Travis, like, trying to hold back tears when he was telling this story to to Archer when he was trying to explain this to Archer. And um, I can remember, actually, I didn't even try and hold back tears. I remember my grandmother was there. And not my dad's mom. My mom's mother was there. My dad's mom had already uh, moved to Florida. But um, I remember she was in the apartment. I walked in from the door. You could see the couch. And my mom was sitting there. She called me over and she explained to me that my father had a coma. It was in a coma and it was a massive hemorrhage in the brain that he would never there was no chance of waking up there, there was you know there was no brain activity so it wasn't like there's something you could hope that would get fixed and my nine-year-old my sister was nine and she swore up and down that people come out of comas so you know our dad was going to and I, I remember being I couldn't hold back tears I couldn't I, I didn't have any and my mom was distraught and she's saying it's okay you can cry you don't have to be the man you can cry you can cry and my grandmother actually had to say to her if he's not ready leave him alone and so I remember the feeling like I know in this scene he's he actually starts to cry, but it it, it didn't feel like that was the right thing that he should have been doing because that's not the way he was talking. Do you know what I mean? Did, did that make sense? Like, yeah, it was like he was still in such shock that that not the reaction I, I had when I was in his exact position of finding out. I mean, I found out around people I cared about. I didn't find out on a spaceship light years away. But um, so the, the whole scene really talks to me because it, it just shows how human he is as well. I mean, we, we joke about. You know, he's always d- dead looking, and he'd be the biggest drug addict, whatever. But this is this is also part of his life that is it's to an extreme. Hmm. He was so afraid to an extreme to talk to his father that he didn't call him when he had a chance. I didn't show my dad this test when I had a chance a day earlier. I was at the hospital and visited him a day earlier, and I didn't have anything to show him. You know what I mean? I didn't show him whatever other grades that I'd gotten. I was a really weird kid too when that my parents like for the like la- first like 6 years of my life uh, school life like 6th 7th grade they thought I was a dummy. 
because I would only come home with tests they had to sign, which meant I failed. Mm. So like two or three times a year, they'd get a test, they'd sign it, and they'd send it back. And then they'd go into parent-teacher, and they're like, well, you have like a 98 average. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, how can we not see any of those? Because that's what you're supposed to do. They don't tell you to go home and get your good pages signed because that's just what you're expected to do. And that seems very Travis to me. Yeah. He doesn't go and gloat to his dad about how great he is as a Starship Helmsman because you're supposed to be that good. you know. And then he misses his opportunity to kind of talk to his dad one last time and tell him, hey, look, I'm doing great and I'm really getting ahead. And Archer says to him, and I've heard this a million times in my life, you know, your dad would be really proud. No one can say that for sure. No one, you know, I mean, Archer doesn't even know his dad. Yes, but. Well, I'm, getting, I'm getting into that. Hold on. <laughs> I know. But, I know you're getting there. But but then he goes, well, do you remember, did he ever tell you about the letter he wrote? Which is kind of a stupid statement because Travis just mentioned he hadn't spoken to him since he came aboard. So, obviously not. But um, he said he, he wrote he wrote just one sentence. It was the shortest recommendation that he had gotten for anyone. And it said, I never saw a more natural stick and rudder man. And I would be I would be a fool not to pick you. Um, and Archie says he he was right the moment I saw you he was right, you know I knew he was right but he was extremely proud of you, and um, and that gets reiterated later with his mother when he sees when Travis sees his mother but that, it's not part of this moment but it it ties in, but so I love this moment because that particular moment really speaks to a part of my life and something that happened to me and ironically uh, during a time when I was heavily watching Star Trek as well. And as people will remember, um, I've always talked about, I got into Star Trek because my father loved the original series. My, my grandmother on my mom's side did, and they're kind of both in this story. You know, They're tied into this same story, too. So um, I watched this episode with my grandmother. My father had already passed uh, by the time this happened. And um, it's odd. So uh, this episode it deals, deals a little bit with him dealing with his father's passing. And um, the things you remember... As time goes on, gets a little weirder. And for whatever reason, I was sitting at home the other day, and uh, I'm a huge Yankee fan. I'm, I live in New York. My dad was a huge Yankee fan. Um, and in my lifetime, I was born in 82, they had only won one World Series where my life and his life overlapped. And it happened, um, I can't remember what day the World Series ended, but it was a Friday. It was a f- Saturday or sa- Friday or Saturday? I think it was a Saturday. Um, I don't remember the date. It was in November, though. Early November on a Saturday because we were at Jackpot Bowling when I watched the Yankees win the World Series. Uh, my mom was in the hospital with my father and watched it uh, from his hospital bed. And uh, I, let's just say it was like the 3rd or the 4th. Uh, my dad passed away on the 8th of that of that November. Mm. So all the World Series rings that I've watched my team win. I'm a spoiled brat when it comes to baseball. My team <laughs> wins a lot. They, they Even when we don't win a World Series, we're good. I never sat down and watched the World Series with my dad. I watched a lot of World Series games with a lot of other teams, and I, I just realized the other day I never saw a game the Yankees played in the World Series, maybe even in the playoffs, with my father, which is really weird, being that we're such huge fans and that we watch so much baseball together. And I was one of the kids that my dad, you know, during World Series time, I was I was up till whenever the game was over. There was no bedtime those nights. And uh, it just dawned on me the other day, and I, just sitting somewhere, um, and I, I kind of wish we had a little bit more of that in this episode, mm. but uh, but we can save that for an episode all of itself about Horizon out sometime. But so yeah, I mean, um, I almost choked up there in the middle there, but I, I got through it. Dang and, it! Uh, I wanted to see you cry, <laughs> man. <laughs> I was close, but uh, well, watch Field of Dreams with me. Okay. Um, Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> Good movie, damn it! Uh, uh, it's a good movie for you. It's not yeah, so it much is. For that's me. all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's another one that the same concept. If you've ever seen the thing straight through, no, I totally. I I, I um, have seen it. I saw it in the theater. Um, I didn't. Uh, but I watched it. We, me and my dad used to watch that one a lot too for some reason. Um, it's a good baseball movie if you're a baseball fan. But anyway, um, but that's that's so that's kind of my story and Travis's story all mixed into one. Uh, which makes that my single favorite moment of the entire season with him, uh, which is weird because it's his worst season, so mm. worst moment of the season. Well, personally, for him personally, that's the he. If you look back, yeah, he would look back and say that was his worst, mo- you know, worst moment. So most, I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize it as worst as more like most difficult, because worst means 
you know, there was nothing redeeming about it, but there was. So I guess <laughs> you guess. Look, yeah, because I, look, I, if you ask me what was the worst memory of my childhood, it'd be the day I walked in and found out my dad was dead. I mean, mm. so in order for me to become who I am, that had to happen. I would be someone different if it hadn't. That's just a yeah. fact. No, I, I um, get that. So the, there are things that are, are are positive about it, but the moment itself sucked. Okay. Yeah, the moment you know, itself so sucked. I, I I can totally get with that. So and that's kind of what I'm trying to say, and and I and I relate to it. I was, I had a moment very very similar, um, and so that's why this is it's the number one moment for Travis and, uh, for me of Travis. So what's your four? Um, my four is from Horizon. It is, it's all of Horizon. How am I supposed to pick <laughs> one moment? Yes, I know, I know. That's why there's gonna be an episode about this later. <laughs> okay. Then I will use this one moment. One moment. I will choose this one above all others. And you know that is hard for me. Because really, it's the whole episode. But it's it's basically after they've, uh, you you know, fought off the the raiders. And uh, Travis basically saved all their butts as the helmsman. And he calls his brother Captain. And yet... He doesn't boast about any of this to his shipmates. He doesn't say word one about anything that they've been through. He's just, yeah, it was a good visit. And, you know, that's just for him. That's just his moment. And he doesn't, he doesn't need to boast. He's never needed to boast. And even at this moment where he finally finds this place where he and his brother can see eye to eye, and he can give the brother, his brother, the respect that he wants. And that's it. That's, he's, th- that's a private moment just for him. He's not going to tell anybody else about that. He's just going to go back to the Enterprise and go about being the best helmsman of a Warp 5 ship. In that yeah, there's massive only fleet of one. In the massive fleet of one. It could have been a fleet of 100 and he's still be the best. It's probably true. Yeah. So, but uh... but I, just, I just like the fact that... He doesn't ever feel a need to shine a spotlight on his accomplishments. He's not the person who said, yeah, well, let me tell you this story about the time I saved my whole family on this ship. No, that's not true. Right, which, which fits in with the rest of everything about him. Yep, um, that's our Travis. Know, that, that's part of work, so that stays there. Yeah, um, and it's, it's just... It's a great moment. It's... it's like I said, if I'm forced to pick one, that has to be my favorite one, even though the, the whole episode is just one great big Travis moment. No, it really <laughs> is. I mean, I, I was talking to you earlier, and I said that I could literally just watch this one episode, do a whole podcast about this um, in moments, mm-hmm. and, and we we could still have enough to talk about to do an episode about the episode, not just the moments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I had six moments just from Horizon alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had a bunch, too, myself. Um, yeah. So, okay. So, now, we're coming up on the last one, your fifth moment. Okay. This one, again, it's not an episode that I particularly like. But, again, it's Action Travis being a cool, calm customer as per usual. But not while piloting. It's the episode The Breach. And he and Tripp and Malcolm are basically going caving to go find a bunch of Denobulans who they need to get off the planet before this deadline at which they will be attacked and killed, basically, as invaders. So Travis is the only one who really has a lot of experience. And so he's basically taking the role of an instructor. But the the thing where he just becomes, you know, super Travis... There's this part where he, uh, basically, it's Tripp's fault. No, it's not Tripp's fault. It's Malcolm's fault that this even happens. Oh, yeah. But, I was uh, say, it's not Tripp's fault. Yeah. So they're all, basically, Malcolm is uh, too close to an edge, crumbling rock. They all start sliding. Malcolm's being Malcolm. Malcolm's being Malcolm. And he's dragging them all off the cliff. And Travis, of course, is the top man. And he, he had been trying to put in... You know, a, I don't even remember what he calls it, but tying off or whatever. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm not a caver. I don't go rock climbing or you rock climbing. You don't go But uh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't like heights or falling from them, even at a controlled rate. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hold on. 
Yes. So, Bad. So, no. yeah. But anyway, um, he's sliding. It's and, illogical to be afraid of heights. It's the fall you're afraid of. Yeah. It's but, uh, the No, it's it's never the actual height itself. It's the <laughs> thought of falling from it. The splat. Yeah, it's that <laughs> pa at the end that scares me. So, um, but anyway, so basically Travis is like sliding. And at the same time, he's he looks vaguely worried. <laughs> Just vaguely but not really and as he's about to go off the edge he sees this hole and he jams his foot into it breaking his ankle and saves them all <laughs> isn't it like you see him with that vaguely worried look and you're like oh my god this must be terrible yes yes he and he has a slightly unsettling look yes. this must be the end of the world he flinched he must he must have just broken his ankle and even <laughs> After that, when everybody gets up back up to the ledge, he's like, no, I can go on. Let's do this. Just give me yeah. something for the pain. Let's do yeah. this. Shoot this thing up, Doc. I'm going back in. Yeah. He was a football player. He was. <laughs> Daniel's got him from 1980s NFL. Yes. They're just shooting cortisone in the guy and sending him off to play. Oh, poor Travis. Just walk it off. Just walk it off. Yeah. Hey, if you don't get back in the huddle, they're taking your job. Right? That's it. <laughs> Those are your, your two choices. Get out there or lose your job. One or the other. Come on. Yeah. So, once again, Travis being completely cool in the worst circumstances and saving two idiots' lives <laughs> to boot. <laughs> okay, Trip wasn't an idiot. It was Malcolm. It was all Malcolm. <laughs> We could throw Trip in there just so Malcolm's not alone. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's great. That's a great scene, though. Um, it's funny you say like you didn't. That wasn't a particularly good episode. For I didn't. You. I didn't say that I I hated it, but I found it very claustrophobic, and it made yeah. me uncomfortable. Well, what What's interesting is like what I was gonna say was I don't really find that to be like if you skip that you skip. It's not that big of a deal. It's not a horrible. It's not like you said. It's not a horrible episode. It's not a great episode either. It's just blah. But there's a lot of great moments in the episode. Mm -hmm. And like, most of them you are know, Travis. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, like, yeah, true. But but even like when, when Tripp's trying to convince them to get out and he's like, oh, how long do you need? And they're like, three weeks. Three weeks! No, I gotta help you carry this stuff out. Let's go. Like, there's a lot of interesting scenes, but unlike a lot of Star Trek where the sum of its parts, you know, mm -hmm. the sum equals more than the, the, the parts, this is like... Wow, we had a lot of really good stuff that don't make any sense together. Yeah. That sucks. But, uh, yeah, so, eh, I don't know. My uh, my fifth, go, I'm going back to Horizon because I just had to take two. That's okay. And uh, the fight with his brother. Yes. Before the scene that you like, when he's doing the upgrades and the brother's like, take him offline. He's like, I'm not taking him offline. He goes, oh, yeah, is that what Starfleet taught you? And he's all pissed. Um, it's a great moment because, like, Travis is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Even though he knows that the brother's really not mad at I believe that Travis knows that he's not really mad at him at that moment. Mm -hmm. That he is proud of him, even though it's just his pride getting in the way. And the fact that you left me here to fend for myself doing the rest of this work. You know, I'm a little upset with you about that. But he's not hes not mad to the point where he's ta the way he's taking it out on him. He's also blaming him for having it be hard to find other crewmen because people want to be explorers instead, which I found that interesting. Oh, yeah. The way, the way he said that. And, mm -hmm. But the way Travis stands up to him, and, and but to really make this scene worth it, you have to fit in the last scene. Yeah. Where he says, you know, uh, you know, what, what, I, I can't remember the exact wording now, but he's like, oh, it was, it was really good. And he just keeps walking. That, that, they have to go together in order for this one to make that much sense. Yeah. Um, but because this one kicks off the rest of the episode moving forward, um, I, I really enjoy that that little fight he has with his brother. Plus, they're brothers. They're supposed to fight. Yeah. I mean, that's what brothers do. Brothers fight. They have quarrels. And they haven't seen each other in a long time, so it's been bottled up for a while. And uh, the fact that we don't see him wrestle is a little disappointing, but, you know. <laughs> with shirts off. <laughs> yeah, right. And they just tussle. And, I'm uh, sorry. Throwing I, fists. I'm objectifying men, and that's wrong. And I apologize to our listeners. Mostly. Fair, fair enough. But hey, I mean, look. Yeah. I mean, if they had never shown me Travis with his shirt off, then I wouldn't want it so much more. <sighs> <sighs> but I, I did I, I did enjoy that scene. I liked the little fight. I do think they should have shoved a little at least something. I don't know. Well. Could have added to it. But I, I just like Travis's attitude in it and like the huff and walk away thing he does kind of at the end there. And 
And then the the, uh, the whole scene is great. The whole mo- episode, um, the getting the motherly advice and like the mother telling him, ah, even if he won't tell you, he's proud of you. He's full of crap. Your brother's just a jerk. You know, like that. It's all it's all so awesome. That whole thing. And um, I want to throw in. I, I don't usually do honorable mentions. Um, oh, I've because, done two, so get on it. Yeah, I know. I don't. I did one this episode. I don't usually like doing them because I the. What I like about doing these episodes is that I, I force myself to narrow it down to five, even though there's 30. But <laughs> um, I have to throw this in because it's just part of this episode. I love right before the scene with his father passing, he's sitting with Reed and they're talking about um, they should put families on starships, mm-hmm. which is a nice throwback to uh, to TNG. And, um, and then Reed goes, yeah, well, uh, then he says, yeah, well, how would that work? He goes, well, you'd never be homesick anymore. You know, and we go, yeah, you'd have to have a psychologist. Like, huh, Troy, right. Mm-hmm. You know, and like that. I like, I just like that scene a lot. And uh, he's like, hey, well, you know, you can't trip, you can't walk down a cargo ship without tripping over a cousin or a nephew or an uncle or a brother. Like, it's just, I, I like that scene. I like the fact that they kind of threw that in there as like a little Easter egg. Yeah, and, uh, that's, that's one of my favorite moments, too, that didn't make the final list. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not big enough to make it really. It's, it's not impactful enough. It's just kind of a... A little bit of fan service that I thought was, again, not overly done. You know, it was it was good. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to be super impactful to be my favorite. Well, that's true. But they can't hold up to some of these no, other moments no. in this episode, though. That's the problem. It's in the wrong episode for that to be the moment you pick. Um and I think I figured out this fan service stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, really? I okay. think for me, for, you, for me, for you. If the scene is still entertaining and funny, even if you weren't a fan before, it's okay. I think that that's good. I like right. that. Right. If if I had to have watched or remember, look, I like that I remember it came from TNG, but if I had to remember TNG for this scene to make any sense, it's done wrong. But I can understand the funniness of huh, families, haha, <laughs> psychologists, because your family's there. I can get that whether I've ever, even if it's the first episode of Star Trek I've ever seen. Yes, that is a very good point. I think that that's a good meter by which to measure. Yeah, and I think that's I'm sorry. how I'm I sorry, define Brandon. It. Measure, measure. <laughs> sorry, measure. It's it comes from being a child of the South. Uh, I wasn't born there, but my grandmother and my mother has. Well, my mother still has an accent, and that's she would. My grandmother would say treasure. She wouldn't say treasure. She would say treasure really? and measure. So that's where it comes. I want from. treasure. I like that one better. I think I'm gonna start using that one. Go for it, treasure. You are my. It's gonna really confuse people here in New York. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah. I I, I, I want you to walk around saying that and. And film people's reactions. I want <laughs> I can go that viral. I want that so much. So I think, <laughs> so I think that was a good list, though, right? I mean, of ten moments, and we didn't actually cross over. We got we close. Didn't. Yeah, we got, we got close, but we actually there was more things to pick. We we crossed over once or twice with Hoshi, right? But yeah. In this, there's so many more scenes that we picked moments that were side by side, mm-hmm. actually. But not identical, which was kind of cool, too, because you can almost chronologically watch Mayweather through the series, through the season, yeah. by just going through our little clips. Um, so to, just to sum it up for the fans, I did uh, Minefield when he asked to not kill Reed. The seventh when he, he tackles a guy like he's uh, like he's Lawrence Taylor and the guy's Joe Theismann. Uh, Catwalk when he um, oh when he's going to the anomaly thing and he's cold as ice. Horizon when he finds out his dad passed away and that reaction and the fight with his brother. Uh, with honorable mentions of something I said up top I can't remember and the TNG callback. Um, yes. And then your list was my list is uh, honorable mention Travis with a shirt off and dead stop. Um, this my first one the seventh with action Travis finding stuff and things and uh singularity travis being ocd about doing his job <laughs> so adorable an honorable mention of travis telling flocks about the game with the fargans in stigma <laughs> and then uh travis saving the day as the helmsman and uh and finally calling his brother captain not boasting about his adventures to his shipmates when he comes back from the horizon and number five, in the breach, 
breaking his ankle and barely flinching and saving two stupid people while he does it. Yes. Yeah. So, so hey, if you can't figure out who Travis is in that list, I, I can't help you because <laughs> that's that's Travis to a T. Yep. Saving stupid people. Ah, uh, Travis. <laughs> With a tiny bit of emotion, but only if someone dies. Yeah. Oh, uh, and he's a good little crier. Once he got going, yeah. I'm just like, oh, I want to wipe your tears, sweet <laughs> Travis. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was pretty good. It was a good scene. Uh, like I said, it, it spoke to me in many ways. But uh, but even if I had not lived through that, that would still be an an all time favorite scene. Absolutely. I mean, the, the acting on both sides between him and Archer were both top notch, and uh, it was filmed just right, and it was the dialogue was given just properly, and. Yeah. So, and and I'm I a think... sympathetic blubberer, as I told you earlier today. Yes. So Travis starts crying. I mean, he's on the brink of crying, and I'm starting to get emotional, and here come the tears. I'm like, okay, got to get a tissue, got to get a tissue. <laughs> Is Dave going to come in the room and say, honey, are you crying? Why are you crying about this time? <laughs> because well, crying is, is my reaction to any extreme. Super happy, crying. Super sad, crying. Super angry, crying. Super upset, crying. Super scared, crying. So if it's super, if if it's just crying. yeah, if it's an extreme emotion, there's crying attached to it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. So maybe we should have seen like a massive waterfall from Mayweather in that scene because clearly he does everything else at an extreme. Yeah, but that's that's the thing about Travis is that when it comes to his emotions, he is not as open with them. No, not at all. He and, is uh, he's very calm and collected at all times. We didn't we didn't see much emotion from him and uh another reason why I think that scene is so great. So Yes. Uh, like I, I started to say it in, when I was explaining the scene, um it gives him a more human feel. Mhm. Where a lot of the other times he's very um Vulcanish. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking in his the same reaction thing. to things. Yeah, but uh, except for of course the playing Fark, Farcel, <laughs> whatever. Then I was gonna say <laughs> Farkle, was, but that's a dice game. He was playing with Fargans. <laughs> they're, they're there you go. Things. I don't know. I thought about the dice game. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, that's that is Farkle. <laughs> I know. He's he's explaining that with cows. It was great. Yeah, but, you uh, you take the cows and you put them in a big cup and you, and you, you shake, shake the it. cup and you roll it. It's kind of like Yahtzee, but with cows. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> okay, we are not condoning that at no, all. No, 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 no. People who think we want to hurt cows, we, do not, we don't. We do not want to hurt cows. We don't. They're fake cows, like monkeys in a barrel kind of game. Yeah, yeah, not real cows. They're... Except except they're animated. So they run you over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're robot cows. Mm -hmm. and I think it's okay to hurt robot cows because they're not sentient. Yet. There you go. And, and you're not really hurting them because they don't have feelings. Right. Perfect. We fixed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you want any, any last words on uh, our man uh, Mayweather here? Oh, it just, rewatching these moments for me, to find the moments, really just made me appreciate Travis all that much more and really started to show me that pattern of just how cool, calm, and collected and good at his job he is. And I just really enjoy him. I've always really enjoyed him. and But now I enjoy him just a bit more. And it wasn't the whole shirt off thing. That was not a factor. Okay, it was a little bit of a factor. But it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't an honest. overwhelming factor. It was just a nice treat for Brandy. So I think he's great. I love Travis. Yeah, so I've always liked Travis and... So on first watch, you know, when you first start a series, you're trying to figure out who you like, who you don't like, uh, what character traits you like, how they're going to grow, and what changes over the first few episodes. And by season two, you kind of already made up your mind about characters. And I, I always liked Travis. Mm -hmm. He didn't have enough screen time for me, mm. um, but that was true of him and to a bigger extent, Hoshi. Once Horizon, once Horizon came out, he jumped way up my list to probably my second favorite character of the show. Uh, yes, that one scene does play that big of a role for me, and uh, it's not like he was garbage before that, So it's uh, and it's not like he's garbage after this, so he jumps way up the list, and uh, obviously, yes, I'm a big homer for, uh, for Bacula, so I, I love Archer, but I literally love this show, whether it was good or bad, because I loved his show before that and that's the, why I'm okay with watching Detained despite all its many issues <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> so Quantum Leap flew into this, then I found Travis, and this is a great big happy family now. Um, but I do, I do really enjoy Travis the character. Watching these again was great. Uh, I can't wait till we finally get back around to him. I don't know what season we'll be in by then, but we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, I'll write it all down. I do and wanna... I'll have you pick a number, and then I'll just go through like the mash game. And <laughs> exactly, <laughs> there are people out there who know what I'm talking about. I guarantee. I'm sure it. there's plenty of them. <laughs> I, I was still trying to figure out Miss Mary Mack when I was younger. Mm. Oh, hands going different ways. Yeah, I, I, I still can't do that. <laughs> Neither can mm. I. <laughs> We're good. Yeah, but, um, and when my wife tried to teach me once. I was like, this is, I play video games and I can hit a baseball at 104 miles an hour. and So I have hand-eye coordination, but this ain't working. <laughs> so and for those who can't see this because we're on... <laughs> your phone i did like half of the moves and then slapped myself in the head so yeah. um that but that's kind of how it goes and uh so back to travis i really enjoyed travis i really like travis as a character and uh i'm i'm not happy to say anyone's family members died but it's a tv show so no one actually died so i'm glad he got this because we do see a lot of character development in archer trip fox and to paul and this is a big moment for a character who gets substantially less words on screen because mm. he's actually in a lot of scenes but he doesn't really impact the scenes much yeah, sta often, staring so. at stuff yeah reacting so, to words right so it's still you know it's better than what hoshi got because she was not even in a lot of the scenes yeah. even though she sits right behind him so i don't know how they missed her but <laughs> they did well it's kind of more uh, like off to the side yeah but they always kind of seem to take the pictures from in front of her yeah looking that way across the bridge but Whatever. I mean, for someone who's in a lot of scenes but doesn't have a lot of act, uh, a lot of lines, necessarily, uh, I thought that Horizon was a great episode for him. Uh, it was definitely. Oh, uh, we'll get into it when we get into other moments. Never mind. Yeah. Well, we we will have to do a deep dive on Horizon because I have a lot more to say that I didn't say here, because that would have been a deep dive into Horizon. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, we definitely will because it's one of it's one of my favorite episodes. Yes. Uh, definitely one of my favorite of season two, and uh, and is an essential to season two. Yes. Yes, absolutely, and and I think that for me, Travis of the lesser um, screen time roles in all of Star Trek, Travis takes number one for me. Of all the people who get a l smaller role, overall role, Travis is the best and the most uh, influential, in my opinion. Fair play. To, yep. Uh, I, Star Trek. I would agree so, with that. Well said. So. Yep. It's been fun talking about Lawrence Taylor sacking Joe Theismann as Travis today, but this isn't the only thing we've been discussing on the network. So here's a quick look at some of the other things you may have missed elsewhere on Trek FM. Previously on Trek.fm, Earl Grey. Okay, can I just say one, one parting yeah, shot about the enemy? Uh, and this is just something that annoyed me in the episode. It has nothing to do with the Romulans, but when Jordy's down on the planet and he, and he uh, detects the neutrino beam, he says, Wesley Crusher! And I think, how would you know that? Like, no one else on the ship is smart enough to have thought of this. And it's just, it just really irked me. <laughs> and, and, you know, jordy has been on the ship with Wesley for a couple of years. He knows that if Wesley's around, he usually saves the day. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, he is jumping to a conclusion a little bit. Could have been like, Reg Barclay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that was him. To the journey! I feel like they missed an opportunity to put the Talaxian fur fly in Neelix's medicine bundle. I think the fur fly is a little large to go in the medicine bundle. It's more like a medicine backpack. Yeah, that, that fly is huge. That's something you'd see in, like, if you play video games, you would see that in Fallout coming at you instead of a blood bug. Yeah, the fur fly is the state bird of Talaxia. <laughs> so is it a bird or is it a fly? Which is it? <laughs> Standard orbit. <laughs> There's four volumes of Batman the Animated Series. The first three are pretty much the same season. They added Robin and they changed the name to The Adventures of Batman and Robin, but that's still the mm -hmm. same animation style, same voice cast, same creative direction. Uh, then there was a bit of a break and they revived Batman the Animated Series called The New Batman Adventures. Changed all the animation. Most of the voice talent was the same, but the story quality was just, it's kind of like a third season of TOS. Man, I'm I'm so proud of myself finding all these parallels. <laughs> the 602 Club. I totally agree. He is, I love, it humanizes him because Professor yes, X, yes. we've seen him as the stoic 
teacher who can do no wrong, very wise. So to see him kind of in this sort of like, you know, youthful, kind of very energetic, very, uh, it's, it's just a fun character and you get to see him develop. I think one of my favorite sequences in the film is watching him, uh, the montage where he's teaching the kids how to hone their mm -hmm. powers and just him being in his element like that. And McAvoy really sells it. I, I mean, a lot of this, a lot of the, the dialogue in this film is, is a little cheesy and it's a little stilted at times, but he, there's not a single moment I don't believe him. And that's what else is happening on Trek.fm. Check out all these shows and join the conversation about your favorite corner of the Star Trek universe and beyond. You'll find us wherever you get your podcast. If you're an Apple user, be sure to hit the subscribe button in Apple Podcasts on iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV or the desktop iTunes app to get the latest episodes as soon as they are published. And please leave us a star rating and written review. If you're not an Apple user, we've got you covered as well. You can find our shows on Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Windows Phone, in most third-party apps, The Huddle, and you can stream and download the MP3 file from your website or grab the RSS link. Boomers, we want to hear your thoughts on today's show, and here are the ways that you can do that. The best place to join in the larger conversation is, of course, the Babel Conference, which is our listeners group on Facebook. Go on to the Facebook, type... B-A-B-E-L, Babel, into the search field, and it should come right up. Seriously, it's like the first option. If you would like to get in contact with us by email, you can use the form on our website, which is trek.fm slash contact. Choose to send to a show and select Warp 5. That will come right to us, and we can plan out the next play with your help. You can also find the network on Twitter at Trek FM and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Trek FM. Uh, so Patrick, um, when you're not rolling around with, with your brother on the floor of the ship, where can people find you? Well, nowhere. We do that just so often. We don't wait years to see each other and I don't even have a brother, but yes. you can find me on the Babel conference and, uh, I pop my head up in there. I've been actually responding more lately. I've had a little little bit more time, not much, so sometimes those responses aren't totally coherent, but they're there. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at MagicDrop5. I have not been uh, keeping up with that. I've been doing a rewatch that I wanted to post there. Hasn't been going well. Hmm. Um, so really, you can find me here, or you can find me over at The Edge with my buddy Amy, which uh, when this one drops, I believe the same day, if you're listening to this, the day it releases is the episode with you and Amy when we go over uh, Tilly. So Yay. I believe that's releasing on the same day. And uh, I'm editing both. So, yes, they'll release on time. Mm -hmm. um, so, Brandy, when you're not flashing your greatest superhero pose and then ta tackling a convict uh, or a fugitive, as it may be, where can people find you on the interwebs? Oh, gosh. I spend so much time tackling convicts. It's really difficult to find me these days. But uh, you can find me at the following places. The Babel Conference. You can find me at Brandywine12 on Twitter. Brandy's with an I. 12 is a number. You can find me sometimes on the 602 Club. You may hear me coming up on an episode of Literary Treks. Actually, maybe two episodes. You just don't know. We'll see. And uh, also, I do a podcast with my husband, Dave, called The Dark Corner Podcast, where we talk about stuff and things we like from a darker point of view. There is swearing. Don't let children listen. And don't listen to it at work unless you have headphones. Uh, or you're being make that mistake. <laughs> you Let you be a lesson to all. Yes, yes. Let me be a lesson. I did it again today. It was, I was in a room by myself, I thought. <laughs> um, Sorry. So anyway, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wore the wall, didn't go all the way to the ceiling. <laughs> um, found that out the hard way. So <laughs> if you'd like to help us keep all our shows coming to you each week, you can become a patron on the network on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash trekfm. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash trekfm to get all the details. That's how I got involved at first. I became a patron. Uh, I became an associate producer on uh, Metatrex. That was my first experience with uh, Trek FM. It was a great experience. And uh, now I'm podcasting here. So, you know, there's always perks. Perks include early access to episodes, exclusive content, producer credits, and more. Available through our special patrons website, Patron Zone. It requires a great deal of money to produce, host, and distribute these shows each month. We really appreciate any support you can give us and hope you'll join the team. Again, you'll find all the details on patreon.com slash trekfm. 
And as always, we would like to take this time to thank our associate producers for Warp 5, who are in no particular order except that that I have typed them. Norman C. Lau, Floyd Dorsey, Mike Morrison, Tim Cooper, Justin Ozer, Mark Flessa, and Chris Trebuzio. Thank you so much for your support of the network and specifically your support of Warp 5. So, listeners, thank you for taking this uh, dive down the rabbit hole with us. But uh, that's all we got for you this week. So keep calm and boom on. Okay, so, all right. <laughs> so I that had, one doesn't count. I had listed, which is we're not counting things. I had listed moments in Dead Stop. Never, not that one. So that, was, <laughs> that was not one of my I know. My memorable I'm moments sorry. of him. But, uh, but I did do that, and then I thought to myself, that's kind of cheating. That would yeah. be like using Mirror mm-hmm. um, Mayweather, and I wrote a whole bunch of notes and then crossed them all out and started again. <laughs> So, 